Welcome to the video tutorial for the Unit 10 Take Home Test. Um, just as you understand as we work through, anything in blue that's already done is something that I've done. Anything you see highlighted in green is something that we're going to do. And anything highlighted in pink are answers we're not going to give you. We're going to expect you to do. So that's most of this vocab. This vocab is very important for you to understand the questions on the exam. Um, I gave you some of those answers, so you should be able to find the others on your own. Um, just be aware that no work, no credit on this. All right. Let's move down and look at these Boyle's-Charles differences. This first one we gave you direct relationship between variables. That's Charles. And we taught my students that Charles watches direct TV. If you go ahead and write that, we'll give you one point of extra credit if you write all of this down so that we know you watch the video tutorial. Okay. When we look down here, pressure is held constant and temperature held constant. Um, remember the variables in Charles' law is TV. So things that are varying or changing would be temperature and volume. Something that's constant then that's not in his equation would be pressure. So if pressure is held constant, that would be Charles. Because pressure is not in his equation as a variable. Boils is pressure and volume, which means temperature is held constant. Temperature is not part of the equation. So a lot of times the questions will say when pressure is held constant. And that confuses students because they don't realize that means it's Charles law. Down here for the truth false at the end, I gave you the first two. Um, let's look at C together. It says pressure is defined as the number of collisions with the walls of a container. It's also is defined as force divided by area, and that is true. When gas molecules collide with the walls of a balloon, that's what makes the pressure on the balloon. We'll let you do D and E on your own, but S. Gas molecules can diffuse without limit to fill any volume. That's true. Okay, gas will diffuse to fill any volume. And G, molecules in a gas often chemically react with each other. That one's false. Gas molecules don't know that the other ones are around it. They don't attract or repel. Okay, let's turn over. Okay, sorry, this is a weird little booklet packet for us here. Okay, let's look at these first few says your choices are to write decreases, increases, or remain the same. We gave you the first few. It's talking about the syringe that we used in class. As we compress the syringe, this means as we pushed in the plunger. Okay. As we pushed in the plunger, the pressure in the syringe increased. Okay. Because as we pushed in the plunger, volume went down, which meant that pressure went up. That was a Boyle's Law. And the temperature was the same. Temperature was held constant. Temperature didn't significantly change as we did this one. That's how we knew it was Boyle's Law. Temperature is constant. Okay. Looking down at these ones, I'm going to give you the work um, for my students. And I strongly recommend for anyone, I have my students box in the given, circle the unknown, and then label the problems. So in this case, we were given 7 liters. And so I put that as volume 1. Um, we're given a temperature. I cross out any time I see Celsius. because We have to convert that to Kelvin by adding 273. So 22 plus 273, that was 295, will be our T1. Okay. Balloon is carried outside, so there's I, my change to temperature, T2. So negative 3 plus 273 is 270. Okay. It's asking me what is the volume of the balloon. So I've got to look for an equation that has two temperatures and two volumes which on the back of my periodic table is going to be this one. Two volumes and two temperatures. Okay, I gave you the answer so you can check your work, but you have to show work for credit on this. Okay, same thing here with 21. Um, Boyle's is what I wrote as the law, and I always fill in the P and the V that are hiding in Boyle's name, so I know that that's pressure and volume. The tricky thing here with standard pressure, you have to have memorized where to find that. Okay, it says right here, um, Standard temperature, 0 degrees Celsius. Standard pressure, 1 atm. Okay, for 22, I showed you the work, but I didn't give you the answer. I changed my mind. I whited that out. So it's asking me for total pressure. Well, it, excuse me, it gives me total pressure. It gives me partial pressure, partial pressure. It's asking me for P3. That's how I knew it was Dalton's law. And we had pressures. So I'm, I set them all up there. Okay, you don't just add those three numbers for the answer, because they gave you total pressure. 
total pressure is this. So I set up my equation, solved for P3. So there's the work. You can check your work, and then you should be able to calculate that on your own. All right. For this one, we're going to do number 23 together. Um, we're going to show you some work on this one together. So let's calculate the pressure um, of this many moles, which is the variable N, at this temperature, which is already in Kelvin, so don't add 273, and our volume. So they're having me look for the P, and for my students, I always write my variables in different colors. PV equals NRT. Okay, so I don't plug anything in until I've rearranged it where my colored or what I'm looking for is by itself. So pressure times volume. My answer times volume. I need to divide by volume so that this cancels out. So pressure equals N times R times T divided by volume. So I can start plugging that in. Pressure equals N, which I know is moles, so 0 0.421 times, now it doesn't say anything in here about R. So you're supposed to remember that R isn't in the question, it's on the back of the periodic table. R is the ideal gas constant, 0 0.0821 times temperature in Kelvin, which they already gave us, 254 divided by 3.0. 3.32 liters. So be very careful how you enter this into your calculator. These top answers have to be in parentheses. Um, 0.421 times 0 0.0821 times 254. Okay, so I need to get an answer to that first by using parentheses or by just calculating it. Then that answer divided by 3.32. So I got 2.64, and I need to round that to three significant figures like my given was. Um, 2.64. All right, on the back up here, they're having us do some pressure conversions. So I gave you the work and the answer for this one. I'm going to make you do 20. I'm giving you the answer for 25, but you don't get any credit for that unless you show work. Okay. So I boxed in my given and circled my unknown. You write your given here, just go down your unit, put what you're looking for on top. Now I got these numbers here, remember, my equalities on the back of the periodic table. This is atmospheric pressure equals millimeters of mercury equals kilopascals. Let's take a look down here then. Number 26 is the ideal gas law. It tells you standard temperature and pressure, which you should know means pressure of 1 atm and temperature of 273. Now, if you're super clever, you could also do Avogadro's law in this case, um, but I'm going to let you try and figure that one out yourself. Otherwise, you should do this one as PV equals NRT, and you're solving for N. Show your own work on that. Okay. 27 we're going to look at together. Okay, so I'm going to box in my givens and circle my unknown. A gas at 72 degrees Celsius. I always cross that out right away and fix it. Okay, so temperature has to be in Kelvin. So I'm going to go 72 plus 273, and my temperature is actually 345 Kelvin. There's my given temperature. And ATM means atmospheric pressure. So there's my P value. It's heated to, here's a new temperature, 205, okay, which makes this my new temperature. It was heated to it, so that's T2 equals 205 plus 273 equals 478. Okay, what's the final pressure? So they're asking me, and I should have done that in red, they're asking me to find P2. P1, P1. I knew that was Gay Sock's law because Gay Sock is direct TP. And I'm going to need to find it back here, the equation with two temperatures and two pressures. So that's going to be right there. And I always copy down my equation. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Okay? So we're going to cross multiply and divide. Okay, so this top one times this bottom one, P1 times T2 equals this top one times this bottom one, P2 times T1. Okay, now I still don't want to plug anything in because my, my answer is not alone yet. It's my answer times T1. So to unmultiply by T1, I divide by T1. So now it says my answer is P1 times T2 divided by T1. So I can plug in, and I've already got it labeled. 1.80 times T2, be careful with that, that's 478 over T1, which is right there, 345. 
okay, will be my answer. We're going to need to round this one to three significant figures. And since this one was an ATM, my final unit is going to be an ATM. Okay, so go ahead and calculate that on your own. Looking down here, I showed you the work for 28. Um, it's the ideal gas law. Again, you could do it as Avogadro's if you know how. Um, but I showed you the work. PV equals NRT. Solving for volume, I had to divide by pressure. And then plug in. And remember, at STP, that's on the back of your periodic table. That standard temperature is 0 Celsius, which means 273 Kelvin when we calculate Kelvin in one atmosphere. Okay, so check your work. Make sure you set it up right. Okay, and then volume, the unit's going to be liters for that. Let's look at 29. 29 is a Boyle's Law. So I went and said you can get extra credit if you write this. Boyle's, and then darken in pressure and volume, how that's hiding in his name. Okay, so let's label our givens and our unknowns. We have two liters, so there's a volume of argon gas at a pressure of 7.4 atmospheres. That's where it is right now. So that's where it started, at P1 and V1. What is its volume? That's what they're asking me. We don't know that. What is the volume, V2, at this pressure, P2? Assuming temperature is constant, which means temperature is not a variable and is not in the equation, because it's constant, not varying. So we're going to come back to our periodic table, and you need to figure out which one's Boyle's Law. It doesn't say Boyle's Law, but it does have two P's and two V's. So there's our Boyle's Law equation. I'll go ahead and write that down. P1 V1 equals P2 times V2. So right now this says first pressure times the first volume equals the second pressure times my answer. And I don't want my answer times something. So I multiply and divide. Now it just says my answer. I'm going to do that over here. P2. Okay. This one times this one divided by. So now we can plug it in. P1, 7.40 atmospheres times V1, 2.00, divided by 1.00 equals our answer. Make sure you're putting it in here. We should be going to three significant figures. And since this volume was in liters, our answer is going to be in liters. Down here for number 30, I want to make sure we do one of each. So here's our Charles law to do. Charles watches direct TV. I know that this is Charles because I'm given liters and liters or milliliters is how I know its volume, at this temperature, which I'm going to cross out, add 273, because I can only calculate in Kelvin. Now, you will not pass this test if you forget to uh, convert to Kelvin. We convert to calculate in Kelvin. If you uh, leave everything in Celsius, you will fail the test. Okay. Now it says it's moved to standard temperature, so it's asking me what is the final volume. Okay, so the final volume would be the second volume, V2. And so a lot of times people are like, that's all they told me. They said, look for volume 2, give you volume 1, give you temperature 1. And so students get stuck. They did give you temperature 2. We're moving it to standard temperature. And standard temperature on the back of your periodic table is 0 degrees Celsius, which equals 273 Kelvin. So our T2 is there. They just make you work for it a little bit more. The equation on the periodic table for Charles' law, the one that has two temperatures and two volumes, um, excuse me, I should do that one in red, like this, V1 over T1, V2 over T2, okay, and then we're going to cross multiply, so this top one times this bottom one, V1, T2, equals this top one times this bottom one, V2, T1, my answer times T1, so I'm going to go divide by T1 to make that go away. Divide by T1. Okay. Then you should be able to plug in our V1 and our T2. Be careful with that. V1, 2.85, because we labeled it right there, times T2, which is where I moved it to, standard temperature, 273, divided by the first temperature, 298. will equal your answer. We should go to three significant figures here. And final volume, because this volume was in liters, is going to be liters. Okay, so go ahead and answer those two. All right. Let's turn over to the next page. Next page. Um, I'm going to show you some of the work I did, but I'm not going to give you the answers on this page. 
Okay, let's look here first. Um, it's asking you for final temperature, and it gives you an ATM, which is a pressure, and here, and we moved it to this pressure. Okay, so that's how I knew which one was which. A gas was at, present tense, this, and this. There's my first one. That's where I started. And I moved it or changed it to here, in final temperature. So P and T, that's going to be, mm, I'm not going to tell you. I have to turn over and check. Check your notes. Find the equation for that. 32. 32 is a Dalton's Law question. It's, it's asking you for total pressure. Okay. So it's asking you to find PT. Um, and it tells you that gas A has a partial pressure of this. Gas B is here and gas C. So we'd know which equation to use because they just gave us um, atmospheres and uh, MMHG, which are all pressures. And it used the phrase total pressure and partial pressure. So we have to use this equation. Instead of going 1, 2, 3, I went A, B, C because that's what the problem called it. So A plus B plus C. If you add these three numbers, you get the wrong answer. This is like adding dollars, pesos, and dollars. Okay? It's not the same. You have to convert millimeters of mercury to atmospheres before you can do this. And that's like we did at the top of the last page. You're going to have to convert this to atmospheres, and then you can add it. Okay. Let's take a look at the graphing. There's kind of two answers for 33. So this is a direct relationship for sure. This direct line is going directly between two points. So this is a direct relationship. Okay, and Charles is a direct relationship, so this could be Charles' law with TV, or it could be Gay Lussac's with P and T. Okay, so make sure we're labeling these axes. This could be volume and temperature, or you could have gone pressure and temperature. Okay, down here for this one, this is an inverse graph. Um, so you need to figure out whose law, and there's only one, and that's PV, and that's an inverse graph. So in this case, we've got pressure and volume. And when pressure is high, when I'm high up here on my y-axis, I'm low on my x-axis. And when I'm high on my x-axis, I'm low on my y-axis. That's why it's an inverse relationship. As opposed to up here, at a high volume, I'm at a high temperature. Okay, Because they go in the same direction, up and up and down and down. Down here, I answered this first one, what happens to a marshmallow when it's placed in a microwave. Okay, It's going to get huge. If you've never done it, ask your mom before you make the marshmallow get all over the microwave, but it gets huge. As it gets hotter, temperature goes up, volume goes up. That's Charles' law. So looking down here, we're going to have you do the same thing here. Okay. What happens to a balloon? What happens to the balloon's volume when you make it cold and why? And then what happens to air pressure? Add that word. What happens to air pressure in your tires on a cold day? If you were from Minnesota, you would know this, no problem. <laughs> all right, let's turn it over. Back here, we see this one. So as soon as I see a balanced chemical equation, that should be a dead giveaway that we are moving on to stoichiometry. So you can take out your foldable. Remember our unit 8 foldable only knows how to go from grams to moles or from grams to grams. This foldable doesn't know how to go to liters. Um, so these boxes right here can change. They might be liters instead of grams, but all of this stuff is going to be correct. Okay, we're going to give you this, period, uh, this foldable rather because we want you to apply the new stuff to it. So let's look at our question. It says, um, actually, we're going to have you show work on this one because most of us did it in class. There's an the answer for you to check it. Let's look at this one. Okay, ammonia combusts from nit uh, to form nitrogen dioxide according to the following reaction. If 70 liters of oxygen, so that's my given, I boxed in my given, is consumed in this reaction, what volume of nitrogen dioxide would be produced at STP? At STP just gives you permission to do stoichiometry on this. And volume means liters. So this is a problem asking me to go from liters to liters. Now there's two ways to do this. Um, I'm going to show you both just because about half my students liked one way and half liked the other. On our foldable, we can replace grams with liters. So where it says grams to grams, we can do that as liters to liters as well. So the first way I'm going to do this is I'm going to show you the whole three-step process here. Okay. So if I do it as a three-step problem, one, two, three. What we boxed in goes in this first box, 70.0 liters of oxygen, which is O2 right there, 70.0 liters of oxygen. Okay, what we're looking for goes in the top corner over here. So what volume of nitrogen dioxide, so it's blank volume, which is liters of nitrogen dioxide in O2. So that's always what I do. I box in my given, I circle my unknown, and then I fill in the corners. Okay. 
because my period or my foldable, man, I keep saying that, thinks I'm going from grams to grams, but by filling in the corners, I've corrected that, so I know it's liters to liters. Then we're going to disco. I'm going to take all of my letters here, liters O2, and disco it down. Please don't get cute and try to, well, I'm not going to write all of it, because, no, you'll make a mistake. Bring down LO2. Okay, on top, we need to turn it into moles, so the foldable tells us to put one mole of the given compound up there. So one mole, and my given, boxed in as my given, is O2. Okay, and then I know to disco down my unit and my compound, mole O2, which looks, that's what it told me to do down here, and up top it says mole of the given, or excuse me, mole of unknown, which is NO2. And I know to disco down my unit, mole NO2. Okay, a mole always gets a 1 in front of it, unless it's mole over mole, and then it gets the coefficients. So the coefficient in front of NO2 is 4, in front of O2 is 7, like this. A mole always gets a 1 in front of it, unless it's mole over mole. This time it's not. So there we go. Okay, then we end up with liters. My period, or, oh man, again, my foldable tells me to put the molar mass there. But it also thinks that it says grams here, and it doesn't say grams. So if you put the molar mass here, you're going to be wrong. Molar mass only goes in front of grams. We're not in grams, we're in liters. So we're going to come back here on the periodic table. It tells us what to do. Volume of an ideal gas at STP, which we are, the problem said we were, is 22.4 liters for every one mole. So in front of one mole is equal to 22.4 liters. One mole is equal to 22.4 liters. So there's your work. You can multiply everything on top and divide it by the answer of everything multiplied on bottom. If you want to do this as one step, you can because those cancel out. Okay, one mole, one mole, 22.4, 22.4. So I taught my students that liters to liters is always a one-step problem. Okay, so I'm just going to do this as a one-step problem. And I'm still going to put my given in the top corners and what I'm looking for in the other top corner. And you don't even need a foldable. My given, what I boxed in, goes in this first box, 70.0 liters of O2. What I'm looking for goes in the other top corner, blank liters of NO2. Okay, so I've got the top filled out, and I always know what goes on bottom, because I just go down my unit and my compound. So I bring down LO2. Now, liters always gets 22.4 in front of it, unless it's liters over liters. And then we can use the coefficients again, because these coefficients mean moles, but they also mean liters. So I can just stick in 4 again here, and 7 there. So it ends up being the same math, 70 times 4 divided by 7. 70 times 4 divided by 7. Now, like I said, half of my students liked to do it the full way that they were used to, grams to grams. And half of them liked the shortcuts. Okay, so that's up to you. But remember, you can only do that if it's liters to liters. Down here on this one, where it's liters to grams, or from, excuse me, grams to liters, you cannot do it one step. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and put 70, gosh darn it, sorry, 70 times 4 into the calculator. Okay, which is 280 divided by 7 equals 40, but I need three sig figs, so I'm going to say 40.0, and they're asking me for volume, which is liters. There's our answer. Okay. Number 40 it says calcium carbonate decomposes, which means one reactant, two products, when heated according to the following reaction. Calculate the volume. That means you're looking for liters. That's why I circled it as my unknown. At STP, produced from a decomposition of 25.0 grams of calcium carbonate. Okay. They even tell you the molar mass of calcium carbonate, which is helpful. So going from grams, my given, to liters, we have to do the full three steps. Starting in grams, and we can do this just like we're going to here, except we're not really looking for grams. We're going to change that box to be liters. Okay, so I'm going to leave this up here so we can kind of see it. And I've got one, two, three dark vertical lines. So I know to make it one, two, three steps. Okay. I boxed in my given. I circled my unknown. Then I'm going to fill in my top corners. Okay. My given goes in the first box, which is 25.0 grams of CaCO3, calcium carbonate. That's what I was given. And I'm looking for volume, what volume? So blank volume of carbon dioxide, CO2. And then we can listen to the foldable and everything else. I'm going to just go down my unit here. So I'm going to have grams CaCO3 
and it tells me to put one mole of the given there. One mole CaCO3. I'm going to just go down mole CaCO3. Sorry, you can't really read that. Tells me to put mole of the unknown on top, which is carbon dioxide. That's what I'm looking for. And then it tells me to just go down one mole carbon dioxide. Okay. A mole always gets a one in front of it, unless it's mole over mole, and then it gets coefficients. So the coefficient for carbon dioxide is one. So calcium carbonate is one. Okay. Now in front of grams, I do not use 22.4 here. In front of grams, I put the molar mass because one mole equals molar mass in grams. So you can either calculate one calcium plus one carbon plus three oxygen, or it tells you it's right there, 100.09. And I do not want to find the molar mass here. So my foldable tells me to put the molar mass there. But it also thought I was in grams, but I'm actually in liters. So one mole does not equal the molar mass in liters. One mole equals 22.4 liters. That's on the back of our periodic table. Okay. So please, please, please be careful how you enter this in your calculator. Okay, I'm going to try and show you. I'm going to do the top answer first in parentheses. 25.0 times 1 times 1 times 22.4, and then I close the parentheses. And I go divided by, and I have to use parentheses again for the bottom. 100.09 times 1 times 1, and then close the parentheses. And you should get 5.594. We've got three sig figs here, so we're going to go 5.59 Okay, as our sig figs, and we're looking for volume, so liters. Okay, this last one is a grams to liters, just like this top one was. You should be able to find those. Looking at the back, we kind of labeled these ones for you. Okay, they want you to say Boyle's, Ideal, Dalton's, or Charles in these pictograms. Okay, here we've got pressure gauges. So it's adding up all of these partial pressures. If there's only pressure, then it's Dalton's law. Here I circled what was labeled for you. You've got temperatures and volumes. So you should know whose law that is. Here they're showing you all four variables. The amount of gas, which is moles, volume, temperature, and pressure. That's how I knew it was Pivnert, or the ideal gas law. Then down here, when you push in the plunger, you are decreasing uh, volume, which increases pressure, or when you pull in the plunger. Right? So that's a pressure and volume one. Um, I had a sweet girl come in for some help yesterday. This is what was bugging the heck out of her. She did not understand how we knew which one was temperature and which one was volume. So pressure. Remember, there's three units for pressure. Pressure can either be MMHG, it can be atmospheres, or it can be KPA. All three of those units tell you that it's a pressure reading. And if you ever forget that, you can find it on the back of your periodic table. Atmospheric pressure equals this equals this. So all three of those are pressure vol uh, values. Okay, Volume we give to you in two different units. It's either going to be liters, capital L, or milliliters, little m, big L. And then temperature we give to you two ways as well, degrees Celsius or Kelvin. Remember, we always calculate in Kelvin. So you should be able to fill in this table using those rules. And that should help you identify the problems as well. Okay, please make sure you're finishing this up. You're showing all the work. Um, if you watch the whole video, then go ahead and do this and say, uh, how about stoic, S-T-O-I-C-H. If you do that, you're going to go ahead and get another point of extra credit. Okay, great job, guys.